Well, it's time for another instructional flint napping video. In this video, we're going to be using glass, but I'm going to be using one of my favorites, and that's blue glass. Now, blue is my favorite color, has been my whole life. The only problem is it's been really difficult to find a real pretty, consistent blue glass to make arrowheads out of until now. Bud Light came out with a new beer called Bud Light Platinum, and as you can see, it comes in these beautiful, stunning cobalt blue bottles, and you can make some gorgeous arrowheads out of these. And in this video, I'm going to be also addressing some questions that people had since I uploaded the last video a year ago, but I'm also going to try to redeem myself because in that last glass napping video, I actually broke the point when I was making it. So we're going to try to do a little better job this time. So let's get started. Instead of using a nail to break the bottoms out, another technique is to fill the bottle with water to the point where the neck constricts. Tap the top of the bottle with a rubber mallet and the bottom will break off cleanly. To catch any stray shards, I break the bottoms over a bucket that's partially filled with water. This technique is so quick and easy that you can remove the bottoms from hundreds of bottles in no time. Now I've got one of the bottle bottoms that I knocked out with the uh, water in the rubber mallet. And uh, just like in the last video, first thing we need to do is edge it. I want to take that overhang off of there. And remember, we're only going to flake, begin our flaking on this concave surface, the cupped surface. We're not going to send any flakes over this rounded surface until the very end. Same technique as last time. Trying to send those flakes into that concave side. Now this bottom has got a bit of a curvature, more so than the last one, so we're going to have to sacrifice some size in order to get this thing flat and thin. But that's just the nature of the game when you, when you work with curved bottle bottoms. And here's the rounded surface, and you can see that it's um, got no flakes taken off of it. It's pretty smooth. We're taking all our flakes off of this side, the cupped side. And they're not traveling very far because we've got a concavity here. The flakes don't want to travel that far. So we just have to keep working into this until we get a flatter preform, and then our flakes will clean up and they will begin to travel farther. What I'm doing is just rubbing up and down with the antler and I'm dulling that edge, preparing that edge for the next flake removal. Going both directions, up and down, up and down. And then when it gets dull enough, the, the tool will no longer remove flakes. It'll slide on that glass like it is right there. Now I know it's dull enough that I can put some pressure into it, take that flake off. So here we go. Exactly as I wanted.
I've done some more chipping on this piece of glass and it's looking good. It's uh, much flatter than it was before. You'll notice we have lost some size to it, but that's just the nature of the beast. When you're working on a curved piece of glass like this, you are going to lose some size. And one of the most common problems that beginners have and that I've gotten a lot of questions about is they say, Billy, I, I do what you do, but I can't get my flakes to travel across the face of the point. They only go a short distance and then it just the smooth glass surface is just remaining on the, on the point. And believe me, when I was a beginner, that was one of the biggest problems I had. I remember I was always struggling to get those flakes to travel. It took a lot of practice to, to do it, but the way you get those flakes to carry is two, twofold. You have to prepare your edges correctly, and then you have to apply the force correctly. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I do it. First thing you wanna do is take very, very short, steep flakes. You don't, want to, you don't want these flakes to carry and travel very far. You want a, a steep angle on that edge. So you don't apply, you just, you don't apply the force straight in. You're just pushing straight down with your tool. Doing the same thing to the other side. Very short flakes, very steep flakes. You just want to create a heavily beveled edge. Now this is a close-up of the edge and I wanted to show you this bevel. If you notice how that edge comes in and it comes down at a steep bevel. St almost straight down right here. That's very important. That's what you need to, to achieve in order to get those flakes to travel far. That angled edge, that beveled edge, is what's called a platform in flint napping circles. That will allow you to put that tool on that edge and when you push in at an angle, that flake will peel off that bottom side and carry. If you don't have this bevel, the flakes will be much shorter and the edge will not be able to support the pressure in order to drive that flake. The next important thing is how you apply the force to that edge. Now that we've got that edge beveled, what you do is you put that tool on that, on that bevel and notice that when I apply this force I'm not coming straight down. My follow through needs to go like this. More of an, an angle so you're, you're give, pushing it more of an in and down angle instead of straight down. That will peel that flake off so that when it releases it will carry the distance it needs to go. And you do that in and down That's what you get. You can see that flake traveled about halfway across the face. The next series of flakes will follow that first flake and will continue to travel farther and farther. So I'm just going to use this tool. So I'm just going to pop a flake off. And down next to it. Notice how my follow through is on my tool. It doesn't come straight down, it actually goes up underneath the point, which means my angle of pressure is in and down. You can see how those flakes are traveling now. Now part of developing the power is being able to bring enough force to the piece of stone you're working on. And when I work, when I work this stone, I, s I almost surround it with my body and I will stay above it. I don't do a lot of work out here like this. You lose all your power. Keep it in close. I keep my arms in between my legs. That way I can bring in the power of my shoulders. I can bring in the muscles of my arms. I can also, if I need to, to compound that force is squeeze my legs together. Lock my hands inside here like this and develop a hell of a lot of power and I can really drive the flakes with this technique.
Well, I've got flake scars all over the surface and it's looking really good. Now it's time to just finish this thing up, shape it, and notch it. Well, I finally finished the point and it looks really good. Got nice straight edges, good symmetry, edges are super sharp, and the notches are nice and even. And I did not break the point this time, so I definitely redeemed myself. But I encourage you guys to get out there and practice with this stuff. Glass, flint, whatever material you've got. It, uh, it definitely takes a lot of practice to develop the feel and the skill to be able to control the material but boy once you do it's great fun to be able to make lethal points like this thanks for watching and until next time